Good Friday service, the commemoration of the Lord's passion and death. And the Father and the War here will be doing the prayers of intercession. And the Father uh, will also have his be preaching. And Father David and Father O'Grady will be doing the rest. Our sermon is divided into four parts today. We have the Liturgy of the Word, the Passion of John, and the Homily. And the second part is the prayers of intercession uh, for the church and universal needs today. The third part is the adoration of the cross. And the fourth part is Holy Communion. Whether you're watching online in your hospital room and television, we welcome you. And we hope you'll appreciate what we try to do, the great sacrifice the Lord made for us by dying for us on the cross to give a meaning to human life and human existence as a prelude to his resurrection so in a moment early we will proceed in the back O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, so by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Isaiah. <clears throat> See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see and those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, <coughs> accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one spitten, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. For he had done no wrong, nor
nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. And a responsorial psalm. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughingstock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have received, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has a similar being tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was to save him from death, and he was hard because of his reverence. So though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing that was what was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? And they answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Now Judas the betrayer was also with them. And when he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. And this was to fulfill what he had said, I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Now Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was with the gatekeeper, gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly, publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather and in secret. I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, is this the way you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. If I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, what charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he had said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? 
Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. As it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but if you have a, if, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and placed it on his head, and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place mm -hmm. called the stone pavement, mm -hmm. in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Peter, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. And Pilate answered, But I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled, it says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Now standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, 
the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst, and there was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who had been crucified with Jesus. And when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, that the scripture passage might be fulfilled, not a bone of it shall be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body, and Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the, clo the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I'd like to reflect with you on the events that are unfolding on Good Friday. But before then, I'd like to capture how this, what is happening right now around the world, and what is happening with the church this year, 2020, comes closest. To the first the first time the church experienced the, the passion of the Lord and the resurrection if you read scripture scripture has never come alive for me as it has uh, during this this moment first you realize that at this time when Jesus was arrested the disciples were also in hiding they were not out doing stuff and walking about. They were in hiding, they were in some safe place trying to be safe. And that's what we are doing right now too. We are in, because everywhere we are, we are trying to stay safe. We're trying to stay safe just so we are there to bless God when the Holy Spirit comes. And I have no doubt that before the Holy Spirit comes to empower us at Pentecost, all of this virus would have subsided. And we are able to go out and testify of the goodness and the glory of the Almighty God, as the apostles did. You, you also realize, even the resurrection, don't forget, the resurrection happened. The apostles were still hidden, they were still hiding. But it was out there that they went and told Peter, 
Ladies came and told me that while they were sitting in hiding. So, and all of that is going to happen. So, as I look at everything that is happening at this time, it just reminds me how close we are to the first moment of the story and the account we hear here today. You think about even the death of Jesus. And when he is when he is dead, his family is not there at the burial. Two strangers. No one knew them. I'm sure they didn't have, have the, they didn't even have the right to greet Jesus because they were not friends of Jesus that everyone knew. The twelve were not there. But he had to be buried by two good friends, secret ones. And that's where, where we are right now, where a lot of our loved ones are going to die in our absence and very likely be buried in our absence. So Jesus has allowed us to experience, come close to what he himself experienced, what his family experienced, what his apostles experienced. The apostles didn't even have the time to grieve. The mother had no time to grieve her son. And that, that may be the experience of many of us. The reason I bring all of this is the fact to let us know someone was there before we are here. And he understands what you and I are going through right now. And he is with us. And he is with you. Normally what I would do when I read the gospel is to try to identify you know, um, a figure or an image that I want to relate myself to. Now, this is a long gospel. The, account, the, the whole account of Good Friday is very long. But I'm going to single out just three figures to reflect on very quickly. First, the Lord Jesus. I'm thinking about before the arrest, you remember that Jesus had been in the garden. And you think about what he was doing while he was in the garden. He was sorrowful. He was fearful. He was terrified. You remember three times he prayed, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass me by. Not my will, but yours be done. The cup didn't pass. He had to drink it. I have no doubt that that may be the cry of many of us. God, just spare us. Let this whole thing come, like, come to an end today. We may be desperate right now. And I'm sure there are people out there who are really, really scared and desperate because we so obsessed on this virus. You remember, in another account of this text, the Bible said when Jesus had prayed three times without a response, God sent an angel to minister to him. But all the time, Jesus wasn't just focused on his crucifixion. He was focused on God. Yes. Crucifixion was there. But he was focused on God. Three times he says, God, if it's possible. He was focused on God. If it's possible for God to do this. There are many of us who are just so focused on this virus, night and day. We are so frozen in us, in our souls, in our houses, and in our lives. Unable to do the things that once gave us pleasure in our homes. Because our minds are just focused and dreading this virus. Maybe it's time, dear friends, to learn from the Lord. At a time when we have no control, we turn to the one who has control. We turn to God and bring our concerns, our fears to him and ask for help and support as the Lord needs. Otherwise, fear doesn't just crush us. Fear kills us. Fear itself kills us. So may God help you Help us all to overcome that fear. The second person I want to think about is Peter. We all know how zealous Peter was as a disciple. Today, I'm not talking about his, uh, his betrayal. That's not what I want to talk about here. I want to talk about his, his zeal, his overzealousness. I'll call it overzealousness. I know Peter had said to Jesus, Lord, even if everyone should deny you, I will not deny you. I will die. I will give my life for you. He said that. And he wanted to prove it. So when they came to arrest Jesus, he had to act first. He drew his sword from his scabbard and struck off Michael's ear. Cut off his ear. 
And the Lord was like, what is this guy doing? Come on, put that thing back. And, and what that says to me is how sometimes we are so overcome with zeal to fight and to defend God that we cause so much violence on people. Whether it's spiritual violence, emotional violence, or even physical violence. And you realize the Lord's reaction. He has stopped that. that that's, that's your will, not my will. That's your agenda, not my agenda. That's your plan, not my plan. And Peter was doing that thinking he was doing it for God, doing it for Jesus. He wanted to fight for Jesus. And so what that says to me is for me to think twice and confer with the Lord before I step out in my zeal to think I am fighting for God when I'm doing violence on people that God died for and loved. That's, a, that's another thing that struck me as I read this verse. The third figure I want to think about is Judas. That doesn't come in this account of the gospel. There's another. But how Judas ended. When Judas realized that Jesus had been arrested, Scripture tells us he was so sad. He regretted what he had done. And Judah went, Judas went and killed himself. That must be heartbreaking. I'm thinking about the mother of this young man, Judas. Maybe she was still alive. That is a loss. I'm thinking about maybe he had children. Who knows? I'm thinking about his brothers. I'm thinking about everyone else that Judas was related with. That was a big loss for every one of them. And I have no doubt he was friends with those 12 brothers, these 11 brothers. They lost a brother too. Two things I want us to take from here. First, we are told because of this disease to stay home. Very often to stay home, not for me, but to stay home for someone else who may not be as strong as I am. There are people who are not abiding by these rules or these regulations. They're risking everyone else's life because they are not thinking about the fact that someone might be impacted by the decision I'm making right now. That, that's why I'm sure that's what Judas did not think about when he decided to take his life. That there was someone, someone who loved him, for whom he was everything. And when he took his life, someone's life was changed forever just by that decision. But I know that wasn't on Judas' mind. He was just obsessed with, his, with himself and everything that was going on, the pain he felt. I beg you, if there is anything Good Friday teaches us, is concern for the other. Jesus didn't die for himself, he died for you and died for me. We can, we can tolerate some inconvenience just for the sake, for the salvation and for the healing or for the health of someone who may not be as strong as I am. I beg you, please, do it. If it's not for you, do it for someone who cares about you. God forbid you are sick. Someone's life is going to be scary, be scary for them. You're going to be troubled, fearing that something might happen to you because you don't know about this disease. So let us learn something that Judas did not see. Let us not do what Judas did. Let us learn to care for someone and think about how this might impact on them if we did it. And finally, let us not cave to despair. As people telling me how hard this moment has been, they despair with. Judas despaired, and that's why he ended up killing himself. If you don't have control, that's okay. Maybe God doesn't want us to have control right now. But the fact that you don't have control doesn't mean someone is only in control. There is someone who is in control. He loves you. He cares about you. And he is fighting for you, and he will protect you. When all of this is over, we will emerge as a new people, renewed, recreated, refashioned according to the image of his son. We pray, dear friends, that the Easter celebration and of course the Pentecost will meet us as a people renewed by grace. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. That God loves you very much. The Lord be with you.
we would rise for the solemn intercessions. For the Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace and guard her and unite her throughout the whole world. And grant that living our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the world. May persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Pope, let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him from the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that honor him, the Christian people governed by you. Make, dear Maker, may grow in marriage by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For all others and decrees of the faithful. Let us pray also for our bishops, particularly our Bishop Timothy, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For catechumens, let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost heart and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever faithful with new offsprings, 
Increase the faith and understanding of our catechumen that we born in the font of baptism. We may be added to the numbers of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and the Lord may be pleased as to believe the truth, to grant them together, to gather them together and keep them in this one faith. Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, do kindly upon the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people. Let us also pray for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that they may grant that He may grant them to advance in love of His name and in faithfulness to His covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and on his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that as we ourselves bring constant and mutual love, and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us know. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, 
Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and a witness of a good work done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of all human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in public office. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the right of all people. Look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of people, the assurance of peace and the freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive, uh, drive out hunger, Unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, hell to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, comfort our mourners, strength of all who fail, who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need. Your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us worship. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the Saviour of the world.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope on the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. In the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, bring me to judgment and condemnation, but not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but for your loving mercy, give me protection in mind and body, and do remember through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are thus called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 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 Almighty ever-living God, who has restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people, who have honoured the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given. Holy faith increase and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder that our Easter Sunday Mass will be at 9 o'clock on Sunday. You'll be able to watch it for everyone. Yeah.